Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless psalm 2 1 through 12 why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us he who sits in the heavens shall laugh the lord shall hold them in derision then he shall speak to them in his wrath, and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. While the Fox News Denied Common Sense Department is perplexed, that the Biden administration is perplexed, that Israel is now backing out of high-level meetings in Washington. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu canceled the meetings because the U.S. would not veto a United Nations resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. So President Biden just took another big step back from Israel. And his administration is baffled as to why Israel is unhappy. This is the same Biden who three months ago said, quoting here, there is no question about the need to take on Hamas. There is no question about that. None. Zero. Turns out none and zero is actually a lot, a whole bunch, because Biden now says Israel should not invade Rafa. So Hamas is hiding in tunnels, using its own people as human shields, and vowing to conduct another October 7. But Israel can only fight where the U.S. says it can fight Hamas. In the last days, Jerusalem will be the focal point of world politics as we read in Zechariah 12, 2 and 3. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. Scripture plainly tells us all nations, including America, will be gathered against Jerusalem in the last days. I have often wondered what could possibly cause America to turn on Israel. I believe the answer is now clear. And if Israel didn't get President Biden's message, Vice President Harris now says if Israel goes into Rafah, she won't rule out consequences. Critics are going after Vice President Kamala Harris after she warned Israel about advancing farther into Gaza. She warned. What's her experience again? She seemed to suggest a red line with this advice to our greatest ally in the Middle East. Here it is. We have been clear in multiple conversations and in every way that any major military operation in Rafah would be a huge mistake. Let me tell you something. I have studied the maps. There's nowhere for those folks to go. Are you ruling out that there would be consequences from the United States? I am ruling out nothing. Social media, media lit up, as you might imagine. Here's one, shameful. Another, one of the world's great orators and cartographers. <laughs> we are so blessed. She studied the map. And kick rocks, Kamala. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is not asking for hers or anybody else's permission. It is impossible to defeat the sheer evil by leaving it intact in Rafa. As in ancient times, like our brothers, we are also united. We are fighting and will be victorious. We will enter Rafa and achieve total victory. Genesis 12, one through three. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, 
and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God's foreign policy is pretty simple. If you bless Israel, you will be blessed. If you curse Israel, you will be cursed. The world is in real danger of being cursed by God. Steve, your reaction to what appears to be a growing divide on policy in this war between the Biden administration and Benjamin Netanyahu's government. Well, it's very clear now, um, and it's not just those of us who have been staunch supporters of Israel who say this, it's very clear that the official position of the Biden administration is to allow Hamas to win. That is their position. They are saying very clearly Israel should just stop. Don't pursue Hamas in Rafah, even though we know that there's at least 40 more percent. They've, they've, the Israeli government, they say we've got, we've got about 40 percent of the tunnels and Hamas's capability knocked out. We've still got to finish the war. We've got to beat them. Everybody knows that actually if you leave any of Hamas intact, and they end up being able to come back and recontrol Gaza. That is going to be a disaster for the region and for global security and America's national security. Despite all of that, the official position now from the Biden administration is, no, you can't do Rafa. Do it some other way. Jake Sullivan up there saying, oh, there are other ways in which they can win this war. Not telling anyone, least of all the Israeli government, how they're supposed to win when you have Hamas deliberately, as we've known all along, mm -hmm. um, using their own citizens as a shield and sacrificing them in order to cling on to power. But that's the Biden position now. It is totally disgraceful. It is totally driven by domestic politics. John Kirby was not telling the truth there when he said that these decisions are made in the U.S. national interest. They're not. They're made in Joe Biden's political interest. And this is what I've said all along about Joe Biden. This is why you can never trust Joe Biden. Right from the beginning, he's 50 years in politics. He is a totally unprincipled machine politician all along. He's been on every side of every issue, abortion and taxes, you name it. Why? Because he's a machine politician who doesn't actually have any principles, doesn't believe in anything except his own political advancement. And now we see that being played out. Jesus declared, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. God and the things of this world are of such opposite natures that it is impossible to love either one completely without hating the other. Those who try to love both will become unstable in all their ways, as we read in James 1.8 and James 4.8. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. I'm not optimistic, I've got to tell you. I mean, I think that, you know, Israel has a priority here, a military priority, which it has to be able to pursue. And we have to be able to support, even if our own administration here isn't. They very much care about getting everyone back alive, so they are making these huge concessions. They're already pausing their action every single day in order to comply with some of these requests. So they're already doing a lot. I mean, by the way, there's an article I encourage everyone to read in the New York Times today, David Brooks, columnist, who says very clearly in that he's talked to all the experts, Israel is doing much more to protect civilian life now than even we did in Iraq and Afghanistan. They're bending over backwards already. We have to support them. The book of Daniel tells us God raises up kings. Daniel 2, 20 and 21. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. I believe God has raised up Joe Biden for such a time as this. A disgrace, shameful, appalling. These are the reactions to the U.S. vote to abstain on the U.N. resolution, which called for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. This action reflects yet another major break between Israel and the United States over the war to defeat Hamas. Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. The draft resolution has been adopted. The non-binding resolution passed unanimously with the U.S. abstaining. It was the first U.N. Security Council ceasefire demand to pass since the beginning of the war. The resolution read in part, an immediate ceasefire for the month of Ramadan, respected by all parties, leading to a lasting, sustainable ceasefire. 
Separately, it also called for an immediate and unconditional release of all the hostages. The resolution did not condemn Hamas or mention the atrocities of October 7th. Despite the abstention, the White House said it reflected no change in its policy. It's very consistent with everything that we've been saying we want to get done here. And we get to decide what our policy is. The prime minister's office seems to be indicating through public statements that we somehow changed here. We haven't. But after the vote, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu canceled a visit by his national security officials to discuss Israel's planned incursion into Rafah. He wrote the U.S. backed down from its stance of linking a ceasefire to the return of the hostages. He added, it gives Hamas hope that international pressure will allow them to get a ceasefire without releasing our hostages. In a statement after the vote, Hamas praised the resolution. Others, like former U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman, wrote on X, just a naked demand for Israel to hand Hamas an ill-deserved victory. Hamas is celebrating the result that tells you all you need to know. Former President Donald Trump told an Israeli newspaper that Israel has to finish its war on Hamas. We've got to get to peace. You can't have this going on. And I will say Israel has to be very careful. Because you are losing a lot of the world, you are losing a lot of support. Representative Mike Walt sharply criticized the move. It's shameful. We don't go neutral when it, go, when it comes to Israel. It's ridiculous. And if I were Netanyahu, I would... I would pull back his delegation. Democrat Senator John Fetterman wrote, it's appalling the United States allowed passage of a resolution that fails to condemn Hamas. Republican Senator Ted Cruz wrote, today's resolution is a capitulation to and victory for Hamas. But Senator Bernie Sanders praised the resolution and wrote, the U.S. must push all parties to honor the ceasefire and rush massive humanitarian aid into Gaza to feed starving people. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, already in Washington, warned of consequences if Israel does not defeat Hamas. We have no moral right to stop the war in Gaza until we return all the hostages home. If we do not reach a clear and decisive decision in Gaza, it may bring us closer to war in the north. Genesis 16, 1 through 12. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. Then Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. After Abram, had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. So he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abram, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between you and me. So Abram said to Sarai, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarai dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress, and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly, so that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Genesis chapter 16 began a prophecy about the baby Hagar is carrying. It is a boy, and she is to call him Ishmael. The rest of the prophecy is less favorable. Even though Ishmael will be the first son born to Abram through the Gentile maidservant Hagar, 
God's promises, went to Isaac, Abram's second-born, with his true wife, Sarai. Though Ishmael will become a great nation, his people will live in conflict with everyone, just as we are witnessing today. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone will be against him. He will live in hostility to his kinsmen. We learn that Ishmael's descendants become the Arabic people. These cultures have been at odds with the Jewish people for millennia. What the world doesn't understand is that this is a spiritual war fought in the physical realm. Ephesians 6.12 For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Satan hates the Jews with a passion. He hates them because God provided both the Bible and the Messiah through them. He hates them because God called them to be his chosen people. He hates them because God has promised to save a remnant of them. He hates them because God loves them. Satan works overtime to plant seeds of hatred in people's hearts toward the Jews. He is determined to destroy every Jew on planet Earth so that God cannot keep his promise to save a great remnant. He tried to annihilate them in the Holocaust. He failed. He will try to destroy them once again during the last half of the tribulation. He will fail again. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. Occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.